International Transformation and Success Coach Myrna Morris Young delivers life changing strategies as the host of the Mindset Transformation Radio Show and Podcast. Each show gives you practical tips on living your best life now by changing your mindset to change your life. I am grateful that you have tuned in today from all over the world. I believe that the Spirit of God led you here so that you can receive insight, revelation, and knowledge to see the next step in front of you as God reveals His purpose and destiny in your life. And now, here's Coach Myrna. Welcome to the Mindset Transformation Radio Show and Podcast. I'm your host, Coach Myrna Young, and today we have with us a special guest, Miss Leticia Atkins. Or is it Atkins or Atkins? How do you say that? It is Atkins, yes. Atkins, all right. Miss Leticia Atkins. And Leticia is the owner of Building Bridges to Success, Inc., and she hails from Washington, D.C. So, and today we are going to be talking to Leticia on the topic of how advocacy builds bridges to success. So I want to say welcome, Leticia. Um, it's going to be my pleasure to um, to talk to you. Um, uh, so welcome again to the Minds of Transformation radio show. Thank you so much, Coach Myrna, and thank you for having us here on the show. Okay, yes, um, my pleasure. Now, um, uh, you know, I know we like to start off my show by asking my guests to tell me a little bit about themselves, how they, what's their journey to where they're at right now in, in this specific um, point in their career, and as an advocacy, um, uh, or an advocate, I should say, um, uh, if you can tell me, you know, have you always been, in, you know, in, in the in the corporate world, or did you, um, you know, have an epiphany and you know, sit, saw some injustice done and decided to to become an advocate? How did this happen for you? <laughs> <laughs> wow, it, it, you know, it, it, you know. I just thought about that today. You know, life is is we 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 make plans, and as they say, God often often laughs at those plans uh, right. because I, as you know, as a child, I always knew I wanted to become a, a lawyer, become an attorney, and I thought right. that I was going to you know be a senator, work in Congress, um, something in politics. I, I knew I had a passion for politics, um, mm-hmm. but. Um, that shifted. I, I, I actually attended law school in Washington, D.C. at the George Washington University Law School. And uh, on the eve of graduating, I, you know, I just knew that I did not want to be in this dog-eat-dog career of, of, you know, defending black and brown people or, you know, chasing an hour um, just to, you know, to which billable hours is how lawyers make their money. And, um <laughs> I just didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew it involved something with 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 communities and communities of color. So um, I, I took a job. I began my professional career, um, and, and and I took a job doing public policy work, and and that focus was more around looking at how the district's policies and le- and laws and legislative practices impacted low income families in the district, particularly children. Um, uh, who are living in poverty. And, mm-hmm. I, you know, I kind of got my feet wet with the public policy piece of it, and then I began to really want to see how the public policy translated to everyday life for these for some of these residents. And I, I moved over to direct services. And in working directly with uh, many of these vulnerable families, I began to see that oftentimes the policies that are made um, they may, they could be made with really good intentions, don't really have positive impacts or effects for a lot of these families. And, um, you know, from there I was fortunate enough to be able to, to transition my skills over to the D.C. government side of, of the work and uh, began, began, you know, working with um, one of our mayors, and that just kind of translated into, you know, 
you know, another job with with another mayor who who uh, came into office, and um, you know, my most recent position, I served as an advocate for over 300,000 women and girls living in the District of Columbia um, as, as the Executive Director of the Mayor's Office on Women's Policies and Initiatives. So there I was really able to hone in and, 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 and review existing um, laws and policies and, again, looking at how they impact the very, um, I guess, recipient that they were intended to impact. And, 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 you know, just back to that point, that oftentimes, you know, you have policymakers who are not connected to some of these vulnerable populations at all, and they have no idea what the true needs of these communities are. Um, and I begin to just immerse myself into the community, um, and particularly one, one, one community, which is Ward 7 of Washington, D.C. Um, I, you know, I took a job in that community, and as the, you know, at that time I was the community services director, and I stated that if I was going to be working in a community on behalf of a community, I needed to be a resident of that community. I need to wake up every day and see some of the things that these community residents were, were experiencing. And I moved into the community, and that was one of the best decisions I've ever made because not only that, but did I become an advocate for a community that was disenfranchised and vulnerable in many instances, but that community also welcomed me and embraced me because of my skill sets and because of um, just having – just caring enough to want to be a part of a community to make it better. So, um, you know, like I said, you know, I had I started, you know, off as like every every person probably with these grandiose ideas of I'm going to, you know, graduate and make a lot of money and, you know, <laughs> and, and be rich and <laughs> kick my feet up. But, um, you know, but that is far from the truth, uh, you know. Um, and, but I can say that I have a peace of mind and I enjoy my job and I enjoy um, the residents that I have come to know and embrace over these these many years. So um, that's kind of how I got into this work. <laughs> well, that that is awesome. And, you know, I can tell passion when I hear it and I can tell that you live and breathe what you do and that you're very passionate about it. You know, um, my daughter also lives in Washington, D.C., and um, is also um, an advocate. Um, you know, she works for a company called um, Common Cause, and, you know, they're advocating things like gerrymandering and, and um, uh, the, the, um, the census and, you know, things like that. And, you know, she – and, um, you know, she – came about hers um, uh, much later in life. Um, and, mm-hmm. you know, all of a sudden, you know, she wanted to to um, uh, to facilitate change. Um, and, um, uh, you know, she um, just came into it maybe about five years ago or so, um, was on her way to being a psychologist and um, or a major in psychology and then, you know, switched over, but she's also incredibly passionate about it. It's always marching in something. I, I need to hook up the two of you together because, you know, oh, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> both live in D.C. She's always in some march and doing all these different things and and um, very, very committed and very passionate. Um, but uh, I think she works in a, you know, working with federal issues, and I think, I guess, you are more, um, with the with the mayor and and, and um, the communities, I'm I'm gathering, right? Well, you know, there's a saying that goes, "All politics is local," <laughs> you know. Okay. So even, okay. um, you know, true. even even working it with, down. Uh, right? Mm-hmm. It filters down. It all filters right. down, you know. So mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> okay. Well, that, yeah, that's good. Um, uh, um. So, are you a lawyer? Yes, I am. Graduate. Yes. I did. I graduated from the George Washington University Law School. Okay, all right. Okay, so that's awesome. Yeah, um, I, I, you know, you said that, you know, uh, just before you graduated, you decided that you didn't want to be in the dog and dog world. So I wasn't quite sure if you, if you, if you completed it or not. So that's awesome. I did. You, know, you got your law degree and decide not to go into law, you know, in that kind of area, instead to be an advocate. That's beautiful. Okay. Um, awesome. Well, thank you for that background information. Like I said, um, 
I can tell that you're passionate about it, and I can tell that, um, you know, um, you're very good at it because passion is, is, is what drives people to success. So, um, um, uh, so let me step back as somebody that, you know, not, um, uh, does not understand all this stuff. You know, if my daughter was giving this interview, she'll probably have different questions. But for me and the, and the common public um, that's who's listening to this, you know, let's backtrack and, uh, you know, um, to knock it down to understanding what it is that you do. So what is advocacy and why is advocacy important? So the two-part question. Okay. Well, um, in my, my personal opinion, personal and professional, I believe that advocacy is all about motivating and mobilizing others to pursue some type of change. Um, you know, like you, you mentioned, your, your daughter is a change agent, and most advocates consider themselves to be change agents or, or sparks to change. So, um, and, you know, um, I, you know, I could give you the technical def- definition. You know, Webster defines it as, you know, an act or a process of supporting some type of cause. But again, at the end of the day, it really is about any activity that an individual or even a group of individuals um, may take uh, with the intent to influence political, economic, social, and even institutional decisions. So, um, you know, on the individual level, you know, it can be. I'm a parent and I'm advocating for uh, the, the special needs of my child in their education. Um, and, you know, on a more community base, um, you know, it can be, um, you know, I live in a community that is a food desert and we have no quality grocery stores, we have no quality places to eat, and we want healthy food options. And then on a, dis- on a, on a much larger, larger you know, um, uh, kind of regional basis, sort of like what the District of Columbia is, is in the process of advocating just for, for statehood. You know, we, um, we are uh, the District of Columbia, but we're not a state, but we function as a state, and we have some of the, the same, uh, you know, uh, financial obligations that, that states may have, like the state of North Carolina, where I'm originally from. As you know, they have regional dollars, they have, you know, statewide dollars, and then um, they have local dollars. Well, you know, oftentimes we're just able to get those local dollars because we don't have that state. So we're advocating for statehood, and that is a big thing that we as, as and the, all of the 700,000 residents of the District of Columbia would like to see. So, you know, advocacy, again, takes many forms from from just, you know, the small day-to-day concerns and issues to those more much larger, much broader um, concerns and issues. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, I have, right now I'm thinking of a question that I know it comes later on, um, um, you know, but, um, yeah, so that, that's pretty great um, uh, that, you know, what you're, you know, talked about, you know, parents advocating you know, community advocating, you know, regional advocating, you know, even though I say that I, I've nev- I'm not an advocate, um, uh, you know, as far as community, when you mentioned, you know, communities advocating, you know, I'm part of my church group, and um, we have a justice um, ministry that we advocate for things in our community, you know, mm. um, uh, uh, and um, we go to the local um, the mayor and, um, you know, the leaders of our community, and um, we go in, in large numbers and and present them with certain asks so that, you know, our community can function better. So I guess I'm part of the um, uh, the community advocator. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, so, advocacy – Right. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. So, you know, and, you know, just like you mentioned, you know, uh, you didn't really know that you were an, an advocate, but, you know, advocacy can mean so many different things. But, um, you know, I think in general it often refers to taking action. So, if, you know, just, just taking action and pursuing change that, you know, in my opinion is the clear-cut definition of what advocacy is. And then, you you know, you, there was a second part of that question. We asked, why is it so important to advocate? And again, I believe that um, advocacy and advocating for issues, it, it 
oftentimes it draws attention to important issues, um, not only drawing attention to those issues, but also um, directing decision makers to make a desired um, change or, you know, to focus on a desired solution. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. Perfect. So um, uh, what are some ways that people can get involved locally and nationally with advocacy? Now, I just mentioned that, you know, our church comes together with with local churches and form one great body so that we can go to the leaders in our community in large numbers because numbers is how you can make change. So Mm -hmm. uh, that's one way. Now, what are some other ways that maybe parents can um, get involved um, locally or, you know, you might have some some suggestions of, you know, nationally, you know? Okay. Right. Great. So what I would definitely suggest is ways for people to get involved. Um, you know, everybody has an issue of concern. Um, you know, for some folks it might be, you know, again, uh, you know, their children's education. For some folks, um, you know, it might be, you know, uh, having recreational activities for for uh, seniors and children alike. And, and then for some it might be, you know, safe uh, housing, you know. So but whatever that issue of, 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 of concern, if you're really passionate about something and you have a burning desire to make a change, um, I would say the number one thing that you need to do is educate yourself on that issue. Um, you know, know that issue in and out if you can, you know. Um, not only knowing what the issue is, but be prepared with, with some possible solutions on how, how um, you know, change can be um, implemented on an issue. So um, I think educating yourself, one, is just the first thing to really do. Um, because once you can, once you educate yourself on an issue, then you are able to go out and educate others, to share information with others. Because, you know, let's face it, we live in a world that is driven with information. And, you know, um, I don't, I, I mean, I've heard studies say, you know, I think the attention span of some folks could be about 60 minutes. So when you're just inundated with so much information, you don't really oftentimes have have an opportunity to really look at why it's important to be involved with an issue. So, you know, if you if you want to be involved and you want to become an advocate at one, educating yourself on an, on that issue or a number of issues, and then sharing that information with others so that you can mobilize them to get involved. Because you want to mobilize others to support your cause because they then become your champions. They then become your supporters in, 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 in the cause. Um, and like you mentioned, there's power in numbers, so you're just not that yeah. lone ranger. You know, um, you have some supporters. And then, you know, there, you know, if you, you don't want to go that route, I would say, um, you know, interacting with your elected officials because if you go and you vote someone in to office, they are obligated to represent you and to represent your concerns. So interacting with them, and that could be an, that can be done in a number of different ways, you know. So, um, you know, that simply you can write letters, you know, voicing your concern about an issue. Um, you can go visit your elected officials. Um, if they're not available to meet with you, then you can meet with their staffers and talk about those issues. Um, and then you can just, you know, um, again, educating folks on that issue because there's someone out there who probably feels the same passion that you do about that particular issue. And then once you a group of like-minded people come together, you can then forge, you know, some type of plan of action to ensure that your concerns are heard um, and to ensure that your voices, your voices, because that's what advocacy is, is all about, ensuring that your voice is being heard. Okay. That is awesome. Yes, I am learning a lot about advocacy and change-making and mobilizing. I love that word. Um, <laughs> and um, influence. <laughs> yes, influence. So, yes, that's, that's, yeah, that is awesome. All right, well, we're off to a fabulous start, Letitia. Um, let's take our first break, and we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Um, this is going to get exciting. Um, we'll be right back. Emergency, emergency. Get your pen and paper. We are dying. We have not been taking care of our health. We do everything. Change our car oil, clean our homes, but we have not been taking care of our health. 
Give us 24 hours with the Green Valley Cleanser One Day Detox. We clean the lungs, the liver, the kidneys, the colon, and also boost your energy up naturally in 24 hours with no preservatives, chemicals, or toxins. Men and women are weak, sick, and tired, and are dying at a young age. Give your body a tune-up with Green Valley Cleanser One Day Detox. The One Day Detox will also burn belly fat and get you ready for the summer. For store locations, to order, or for general information, visit us on the web at greenvalleycleanser.com or call us at 954-364-7595. I repeat, call us at 954-364-7595. Need extra income? The key to financial freedom is giving and receiving. Financial freedom is one of the most desired wishes anyone has, and it is so for a good reason. Because you can never predict when there will be a financial crisis washing away all your wealth and income sources. As a result, educating yourself about the importance of financial freedom as well as the means to achieve it is very essential. That is where Freedom Given comes in. Freedom Given is a Christian nonprofit ministry that is bringing people together to help one another financially. To join Freedom Giving, call Susie for your invitation code at 718 718- Six four four eight six nine two. That is seven one eight six four four eight six nine two. For more information, visit Freedom Given at http semicolon forward slash forward slash freedomgiven dot com. That is F R E E D O M G I V I N G. As a member, you will receive weekly direct deposit funds to your bank on autopilot. Again, call Susie at 718-644-8692 to learn more and to set yourself up to be financially free. Welcome back to the Mindset Transformation Radio Show and Podcast. I'm your host, Coach Myrna Young, and today we are speaking to Letitia Atkins, who is the owner of Building Bridges to Success, Inc., and she is in Washington, D.C., and making a name for herself by being very passionate about advocating for her community and for women's issues. So as we move into our second segment, Leticia, I want to ask you a question. How do people and communities move from problem solving in their personal lives to advocacy? So, you know, you mentioned a few problems. You know, you Mm -hmm. might have a parent um, and you feel, like you said, that there is no recreational facilities. You might have an autistic kid that you're looking for some services, you might have, you know, mental health issues. Now, these are some of the things I can think of as far as problem solving. So, mm-hmm. you know, how, how do people move from, okay, just um, being upset about the problem in their lives to, um, uh, you know, advocacy? Okay. Well, I like to say that there's three three stages of advocacy. So, um, you know, as you alluded to, the, the individual issues. So, you know, that is just really, as an individual, standing up for your rights and the rights of others. So they may, you know, again, you know, back to that example of that parent who's, who uh, knows that their child is not being sufficiently uh, served through their public education system. Uh, so they're, they're looking to ensure that they're getting those supports and those services to ensure that their child is successful. And, um, you know, that, again, just knowing that you have a right and you're just going to stand up for those rights. So um, 
then, you know, that second stage becomes the, the mobilization, that, that word you said you like, that mobilization, mobilizing not only your immediate circle or looking, looking outside of yourself, but seeing if there's others that are impacted by this. And then um, how do you engage those others to, to become, again, a champion or a supporter? Um, and then, you know, and that, that might not even, you know, that might mean, uh, not necessarily mean that, you have a supporter or a champion who's actually experiencing what you're experiencing. That might mean that there's just someone who uh, wants to support your cause and can can, can help um, to encourage, you know, others to speak up for themselves. And then there's that final stage, which, you know, this is a word that I love, and that's empowerment. And that's where, you know, um, you know, folks, you know, you're moving from that, again, that individual, just an immediate need for you and your family, and that you're looking to empower others. Um, and and that, that's just letting others know that they have a right to speak up for their rights um, and that they, their voices should be heard. Um, so, you know, once you, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that once you give a voice to someone who's been voiceless, they don't shut up. <laughs> you know, this is something they become life, they become lifelong advocates. So, you know, just really, you know, again, you know, telling your story is just so, you know, and you probably can relate to this. Telling your story is not only powerful for that individual who's telling the story, but again, it also um, it just lets others know that there is hope in a particular situation, and it begins to yeah. help serve that empowerment piece. Yeah. Yes, that's very true. I mean, I, um, I actually wrote a book on that, um, Out of the Snares, A Story of Hope and Encouragement, and that's because, yeah, you tell your story and, you know, they're saying that, you know, there's, 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 there's something in the church that says that, you know, God doesn't give you a, um, a test or God gives you a test so that you can have a testimony. So because yeah. when you speak your story, it's not really for you. It is for the other person that's listening to it. So you're right. Empowerment and, um, you know, um, personal power is, is, is such a big thing. Uh, you know, when you're, when you're feeling empowered, you, you can go a, a, a long way um, with empowerment. So I love that. You know, and, and to summarize, you said you've got three stages of advocacy, the individual where, you know, you're, you're seeing something wrong on, and you, you're standing up for your rights, and then you get out of involved in it, so you, you know, power in numbers, which is why there's always the marches and, you know, and, 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 and the town hall meetings and things like that, and then you speak on it, you, you voice it. And you yep. talk until somebody listens, I guess, right? <laughs> there it is. Yep. You keep yeah, talking you until talk someone until hears you. <laughs> <laughs> you said you said you, you mentioned another word, influence. You talk until yes. you become influential. <laughs> yes. Yes. yes, exactly. Um, all right. So, um, so that's all nice and good, but we know there's also going to be some barriers, and not everybody is going to become just as you were talking. You know. Think, you know, when my pastor is preaching, he would always say, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. God just dropped something in my spirit. And, and when you were talking, for some reason, I remember that movie way back with Sally Field. I think when you were talking about um, having a voice, giving somebody a voice that was voiceless, all of a sudden that movie popped into my head where she was a union leader and she decided, not, sorry, she was a, a worker and um, uh, she decided to stand up on the table and, you know, and say we're not taking this anymore. And, you mm -hmm. know, nobody is going to – I don't even know the movie, but it's an old movie with Sally Field. And um, okay. it came out to be, you know, one of the best movies. Um, Give her an Academy, and I'm, uh, Academy Award and all that. But I just oh, thought wow. of that. Um, yeah. Um, uh, and when you're – yeah, and, and they shut, she shut down the whole plant because, you know, she's saying we're not taking this anymore. She stood up for them, and, and, they, had to, and they had to listen to her. So it's mm. um, thought of that. So what are some of the barriers to getting involved with advocacy? So, you know, I, you know that's a really tough question because I don't believe there – I think there are perceived barriers to getting involved with advocacy. And when I say that, I, you know, what I mean by that is, you know, oftentimes I hear people say, I don't have time to get involved. You know, um, I work. 
And like in Washington, D.C., you know, it could be different in different other jurisdictions. But in Washington, D.C., most of our um, opportunities to, you know, testify before a city council member or to meet with the mayor, they're going to happen during normal business hours. And, you know, what happens during those times? Everybody else is working. So, you know, that means, you know, people have to take off to come down and to really get engaged. And I tell folks, you know, if it's an issue that you're seriously, really serious about, then, it, you know, make that sacrifice. Um, and then I get it. If you just can't, then, you know, look at other ways that you can get involved. You can write letters. You can place calls to elected officials. You can, you know, uh, you know, like your daughter works at Common Cause. I'm sure that there are, you know, opportunities where you can uh, support financially so other people can go out and advocate. So, you know, I, I just I don't think that there's barriers in terms of becoming an advocate. But what I do believe that there's there are barriers to effectively advocate. Okay. So, um, so, so I'm lay, uh, a- adding a layer onto that question because, um, you know, um, again, back to that being voiceless for so long, um, and that generally what, what happens when there's a, a person or a community of people that have been voiceless for so long, they become disenfranchised and disengaged. And, and so what I've seen, is in in many of these communities when they do have an opportunity to speak to um, their elected officials or people in power, they typically tend to come off a little uh, rough, a little argumentative, uh, because let's face it, they're now getting that voice and then they're trying to, you know, release all of that negativity that they've held in for so long by not being heard. So Mm -hmm. um, I tell folks that if you really want to be effective in your advocacy, then, you know, exercise rule number one, and and that's just the the rule um, that there's power in being nice, you know, um, you know, being exercising diplomacy, um, you know, Thinking your thinking your argument through, because for every argument you have, there's going to be an argument against that. And um, you know, the, the job as an advocate is not to get upset, but to look for ways to 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 get some wins. You know, if, for for lack of a better um, term. And you know, again, you know, to to me, um, the only barriers to advocacy is being effective. You know, because you want to be not only be heard, but you want to be of influence. You want to influence other people to hear you, and you want to influence other people to to be to to make that, those change. Whether it's your neighbors, your communities, your elected officials, um, you know, you want to be influential in your advocacy. So, well, that sounds like you also need to have some psychology training. <laughs> you got to know what to say and when to say it. Is that what you're saying? Oh, wow. That, you know, you that is, yes. Diplomatic. <laughs> what to say and when to say it, yes. <laughs> yeah, what to say and when to say it. So that's awesome. So my daughter should do well then because she started off being a psychology major. <laughs> so that's awesome. Okay, so now let's get to what your company does. Because I love the name of your company, um, you know. When it, you know, when you, when you, when we pick a name for a company, people should be able to look at it and tell what you do. That's what I think. Okay. You know, so building bridges to success. I love that because it, mm-hmm. you know it symbolizes that you're going across somewhere and you you're building up things and you're getting over to the other side to success. So I, I love the name of your company. So in your bio, you talked about, you know, being into the community and, and uh, being a lawyer and, and working with the mayors and working on women's um, advocacy and, I mean, so women's issues and things like that. But um, what specifically does Bridges, your company, advocate for the community? Well, we, you know, we advocate for a number of different things, um, and and and, I, and thank you so much for you know the kudos on the name. That is the exact vision that we had when we you know when we started the organization because we knew that uh, for a community 
that we were working on behalf that, one, like I said, was a vulnerable community in many ways, uh, had been dis- disenfranchised, had, had did not have an effective voice, um, or, at least, or for that matter, had not even been invited to the table when decisions were being made hmm. about the, them. Um, you know, we knew we had some hard work ahead of us. We knew we had we would be in many cases laying the foundation for success for many many generations. So, uh, you know, and then one of my mentors always would tell me, you know, you build bridges and never burn them. So, you know, I had to use yeah. that name, and it was symbolic yeah. of. Of, of connecting people. Um, so, yeah. you know, so kind of in terms of what we do in, in, in advocating for the communities which we do advocate on behalf, you know, one of the primary things we do is we advocate to improve city services. You know, we, you know, again, you know, connecting those dots that, you know, the policies may not necessarily always translate to, to success for those intended um, recipients, you know, we we felt that we were most appropriate um, to be able to kind of say, hey, you know, these are some changes that need to be made. Um, but not only going in on behalf of the community, but ensuring ensuring that we're mobilizing the community as well, and that means educating them on those issues, um, and finding those champions and those supporters that want to support those issues. And oftentimes it might necessarily even mean going into a community um, and dispelling some perceptions that we have where we think we might know the answer, but really hearing from those communities that that's not the answer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, so, you know, again, back to what we really do um, is that, you know, we advocate to improve city services. Um, in advocating to improve those city services, we hold elected officials accountable, um, you know, and, and we do that by drawing attention to the issues. Um, and, you know, again, mobilizing communities around specific issues. And then, you know, back to that, the, you know, that, that point of, you know, giving a voice to the voiceless. I th- and I think that, you know, is top of what we do. We work to really strengthen the, strengthen the voice of the communities which we serve um, and ensure that they are able to uh, bring others along in terms of, uh, you know, that those things that they, they, they consider to be most valuable to them. Awesome. I love it. Um, I also love what you said about, you know, finding champions um, that want to support your issue and, and getting them and mobilizing them to um, to get involved. So, so that is awesome. Now, this brings me to my favorite question because it's one that I would love to know the answer on. Um, what is the difference between advocacy and lobbying? You know, there technically there's there's no real difference. Um, other than the lobbyist gets paid big bucks, you know. Um, but but lobbyists, you know, those same actions. Lobbyists are actually going and fighting for the same uh, priorities of a corporation. Generally, when you think about a lobbyist, you think of someone who's tied to a corporation. So you know, when you're on the Capitol Hill and you're seeing the lobbyists going, you know, door to door visiting several senators and congresspersons, they're being paid by those corporations to be there. And, and, you know, they're good at what they do, but they're advocates. They're advocating for something, um, you know, and, and, you know, just the difference is when, you know, again, it's just that perception where you're talking about lobbying, you know, you're talking about someone who gets paid to go out and do that. Well, oftentimes an advocate doesn't get paid to do their work. You know, an advocate is somebody who just really feels that it's important that this issue be heard because it's, it, you know, it's going to better not only my individual circumstance, but the circumstances of my community, my neighborhood, um, those types of things. So I would say the key difference would probably be, um, you know, one is paid very, very well, where, where one is just probably doing a lot of thankless work. <laughs> you might not get thanked <laughs> for it in the end, but at the end of the day, you know, having a better community, it, you know, is probably worth all the all the money in the world, you know. Hmm. That's interesting. You know, I am. You know, I can actually feel um, and and put some some emotion to you know what you're you, you know to what you were just talking about. Where you know you're saying that you know the the lobbyists and they've got they've gotten nasty 
um, uh, reputation of, you know, going and throwing money on um, these big corporations, you're right, go throw money to lobbying, um, uh, to the, you know, you know, by lobbying, and they, they get all their, their needs met, and they, you know, they they change, you know, even, for instance, the, the NRA, I'm thinking that they're, I'm hearing that, you know, one of the reasons that they are so entrenched um, in society is because they, they, they pay a lot of money, um, uh, you know, to lobby. But here we're you- talking about uh, the person that you're talking about to, to mobilize and, and to advocate and spend a whole bunch of time fighting and marching and going to city halls and calling up the whatever. And you, you're saying that um, they get no money for it. So how can an advocate become a lobbyist? How can they get the money? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know, I, you, you know. Listen, um, I, 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 the hope is that one day, you know, somebody, a corporation will say, "Hey, you are really effective at what you do. Would you consider coming to be a lobbyist for me?" But I think, okay. uh, for me, for sure. it would have to be something that resonates with my soul. I would want to be able to sleep at night, you know. Okay. Um, and and when you think of lobbyists, again, it's, it's back to, you know, I got this you know, I'm getting paid this really, you know, large salary, um, and it could be um, I'm pouring, you know, alcohol and cigarettes and all types of unhealthy things into a, a, yeah. a, a community of color. So, yeah. you know, like, you know, so you, you, that's a fine line we walk because if you are effective at what you do in, in making change, then you could very well have a very lucrative career being a lobbyist. But, you mm-hmm. know, again, um, you know, is this something you want to lobby? Like, I, for instance, I would definitely not be a lobbyist for the NRA because that right, would mean exactly. there are additional goods being yeah. brought into communities yeah. of color, you know. But they're um, very effective, <laughs> and that's why they've got this, such a stronghold where, you know, <laughs> you know, they prefer to change the, the, um, uh, the age of where you can get a gun other than take it off the street. It's just absolutely amazing that, the NRA has just got such a stronghold on, you know, America, and and yeah. uh, and that's because, you know, and I don't know anything about this stuff. Like I said, it's not my space, but you know, I might be talking out of line. But from my my simple place where I'm at, um, that's my interpretation of um, what's what's been going on. Um, and and I know they talk about you're right, you know. They always talk, especially during an election, they're always talking about the lobbying and the lobbyists and, you know, and, 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 and that's all they do. And they pound on doors and they, and they get these issues and they, they go talk to senators and they get their bill passed and all these different things. So, you know. Um, and, uh, and, and listen. The, uh, for influence. <laughs> and, and, no, you know what it is, the, the influencing the power behind their influence is the dollar because not what we don't know is that those same lobbyists, those same corporations are funding some of these um, these Political. electoral bids. Exactly. So if I know, I'm, you know, I, if, I'm, I, if I want to get a, be elected and this corporation is going to fund me to be elected, then once I get in the office, rest yeah. assured they're going to knock on my door for something that they yeah. want. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know this. I scratch yeah, this, your back and you scratch mine, and you get it. There it is. There it is. Okay. And, and the fact awesome. is, we. Had, yeah, I'm sorry. No, I'm no, I, go ahead. No, no. Again, I get very passionate about this because the fact is, know. you know, vulnerable communities don't have those types of dollars, and that's why oftentimes we don't get the resources and the things that we need because we don't have those dollars. And then, so when when you look at the power of that dollar, um, that again attributes to that voice being voiceless. Because um, if I don't have the money to equate to, you know, meeting my needs, then um, I mean, oftentimes it's going to be that 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 squeaky wheel that's going to get heard, and I might not necessarily get heard. I'll, I'll be drowned out, you know. Yes. Yep, it's very true. Lobbying is big. It's you know I think this 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 country's laws are, you know, um, you know we're going to go to another break, but I just thought of something else again um, regarding the drugs and um, uh, how you know the lobbyists you know passing all these horrible drugs and because they're able to buy their way in 
That's what I've been told. You know, they they spend millions of dollars, you know, advocating, you know, um, uh, to get their drugs passed, and they're and usually it's not even good for you. So, you're very right. Money talks in in the United States of America. <laughs> all right. So, um, all right. So let's go to our second break um, to hear a word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back to wrap up. Um, our conversation today. I'm actually enjoying it. I'm learning a lot, um, uh, understanding what my daughter does a little bit more. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Emergency! Emergency! Get your pen and paper. We are dying. We have not been taking care of our health. We do everything change our car oil, clean our homes, but we have not been taking care of our health. Give us 24 hours with the Green Valley Cleanser one-day detox. We clean the lungs, the liver, the kidneys, the colon, and also boost your energy up naturally in 24 hours with no preservatives, chemicals, or toxins. Men and women are weak, sick, and tired and are dying at a young age. Give your body a tune-up with Green Valley Cleanser one-day detox. The one-day detox will also burn belly fat and get you ready for the summer. For store locations, to order, or for general information, visit us on the web at greenvalleycleanser.com or call us at 954-364-7595. I repeat, call us at 954-364-7595. Need extra income? The key to financial freedom is giving and receiving. Financial freedom is one of the most desired wishes anyone has, and it is so for a good reason, because you can never predict when there will be a financial crisis washing away all your wealth and income sources. As a result, educating yourself about the importance of financial freedom as well as the means to achieve it is very essential. That is where Freedom Given comes in. Freedom Given is a Christian nonprofit ministry that is bringing people together to help one another financially. To join Freedom Giving, call Susie for your invitation code at 718-644-8692. That is 718-644-8692. For more information, visit Freedom Given at http semicolon forward slash forward slash freedomgiven.com. That is F-R-E-E-D-O-M-G-I-V-I-N-G dot com. As a member you will receive weekly direct deposit funds to your bank on autopilot. Again, call Susie at 718-644-8692 to learn more and to set yourself up to be financially free. Welcome back to the Mindset Transformation Radio Show and Podcast. I'm your host, Coach Myrna Young. And today we have been speaking to Letitia Atkins, um, her company, Building Bridges to Success. And as you've been following our conversation, she's very passionate about what she does. She really wants to affect change in, in the communities that she serves. And, you know, she's doing a great job for um, the communities of color. So. Um, uh, I, it's a pleasure to talk to you. It's a pleasure to know that we have people like you out there that are is working for change and, you know, not necessarily um, lobbying to fill their pockets. So um, as, as we wrap up, um, I have a couple questions for you. And one is, does advocacy lead to real change? You've been in the space for some time now. Do you think that it works? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I can't underscore um, the importance of advocacy. Um, you know, I just 
just real life examples that I see day in and day out where, you know, people who are passionate about an issue, you know, they stay to, they stay true to the course. Um, you know, it might not be something that happens immediately or overnight, but I have seen real change come about through being, uh, you know, just, just organizing, uh, mobilizing others and educating others about your, your concerns and your issues. Okay. Awesome. So um, do you have an example? Sure, sure. Um, okay, I have an example, yes. A client of ours, um, they were, um, we were looking at the, the budget of the District of Columbia, and the mayor, the mayor of, of D.C. had actually removed some uh, a, 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 a substantial amount of funding from the proposed budget, uh, which would impact the work that this client was doing. It was around uh, clean water um, and uh, the, one of our rivers that had been con- contaminated for many, many years. And, um, you know, they knew without this, this funding that this was going to mean that the, that they were not, the district was not going to meet some critical um some critically imposed timelines that were set by the Environmental Protection Agency under the under the uh, Obama administration. So, um, you know, what they did, of course, the first couple of days they were very upset. You know, <laughs> and most people are. You you got to get over that up that that with those seven those stages of grief. You got to get over being upset, and then they begin to kind of organize. And once we organize, we begin to go out to the community and tell the community what was happening. Because, again, um, you know, everyday folks who are working, they did not know that this was happening, and they were right on the front doors of this river, this river to their home, which had been contaminated for years. So we were able to mobilize and organize folks to, to get prepared to, to, to come down and testify. Um, and uh, I believe an entire community came out, maybe about 20, 30 people from one particular community, they came out and they testified. And um, as a result, they were able to get $400 million restored back into the budget um, to do this, nice. this critical work. Yes. So, uh, you know, again, um, that's just one clear example. I'm working uh, next week, I'll be working with a group of seasoned citizens, I call them, but our seniors, and they are very passionate about um, getting some, um, uh, a center specifically for seniors where they could go in and have recreational activities, you know, exercise, just, you know, just a center for them. And um, we're going to be preparing them to testify before the budget, uh, before, uh, you know, the, the city council. And, um, you know, hopefully, you know, may not result again overnight and them getting funds placed into the budget for, for the fiscal year 19, but at least they will have the attention of their elected officials. And then they know that next year when they begin to prepare their budgets for FY20, that this should be placed in the budget and then we won't have to advocate for it. But we're going to stay the course. Awesome. Yep, we're going to stay the course and we're going to, you know, continue um, getting our message out and, and educating others about why this is important to the seniors so that it will happen for them at some point. Well, that's awesome. So I'm glad I, I thought of asking for an example because some people need to understand or, you know, to, to paint a picture and to visualize what you're talking about. And then again, you know, um, uh, you know, God just dropped something else in my spirit when you were talking about the water and the issues. Sounds like Aaron Brockovich all over again. <laughs> That's a practical example of, you know, of uh, advocating and mobilizing and all those nice words that I just learned. So, so that is um, <laughs> that is awesome. Okay. So um, as, as we wrap up, um, so um, can you tell our audience, um, you know, how to get in touch with you and, um, you know, if, if um, you know, somebody is listening from the D.C. area and they, they would like somebody to advocate for, uh, on their behalf for an issue, an individual issue that they're having right now that they, you know, feel that they want to mobilize and organize and, and get other people involved and they would like you to, you know, to, to, um, to head that up for them. How can they get in touch with you? 
Sure. Well, we're definitely on on uh, on the web. You can find us at bridges to your success dot com. That's bridges the number two your success dot com. Uh, you can also reach us uh, via phone at eight 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 five four two six five six six. And we're on social media. We're Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Bridges Inc. So um, you can look us up, follow us, and we'd be glad to come out. And we do a number of workshops around uh, advocacy. We do a number of workshops around uh, outreach and engagement, organizing. Um, And we also do capacity building for small organizations and nonprofits that are looking to build their internal capacity to advocate, um, as well as we do some technical assistance where we can come in and help with some fund development, some grant writing, um, some of those types of things. So we have a team of professionals that will be ready and willing to to work with you and your organization or you and your community um, around um, advocating at the end of the day. Awesome. Wow. Sounds like a really impactful organization. I um, want to thank you for coming on the Mindset Transformation Radio Show and sharing your passion and your knowledge. And hopefully, you know, someone that's listening might decide that, you know, advocacy um, is, you know, what they would like to do uh, because, you know, there's a lot of people that want to help in this world. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that's one reason I became a coach is because, you know, you want to help people. Um, so advocacy is one way of helping your community, helping your fellow man um, live better lives. And it um, seems like you're doing a great job, and I, I, I thank you for um, sharing your knowledge and your passion with us. I want to thank my audience for tuning in to the Mindset Transformation radio show um, and podcast. Um, you know, the, um, the show is um, converted into a podcast. So if you can't um, be here and on Wednesday at 5 o'clock, you can download the podcast. Look for the Transform Your Mind with Coach Myrna. It's on iTunes. It's on TuneIn. It's on uh, um, Google Play and Stitcher. So you can listen on your Android as well as your iPhone. Um, so um, once again, you know, we, you know, we thank you for your support. And don't forget to subscribe and um, leave a review um, if this information is um, helpful to you. Um, so um, Leticia, um, once again, thank you very much for being on the show. Um, Any last words? Advocate, advocate, advocate. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. That's the new word. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, Namaste.